What's up everyone? This right here is called the corporate ping pong machine. It's my latest kinetic sculpture and it's the result of over four days of 3D printing, two weeks of design work, tons of iteration. Let's talk about how we went from a simple sketch based off of a simple idea to this fully functioning piece of wall art right here. Like all great projects, this started with a simple idea. I can't tell you exactly where ideas come from. I can tell you this though, coming up with the idea is the fun part and it's also the easy part. Because once we have the idea, we have to figure out how to make this idea something that exists in the real world. That's the hard part of the creation. So normally with these projects, I always start with constraints. Constraints are basically the rules or the things that we must follow in order to make this thing work. The easiest constraint for me to start with, the size of a ping pong ball. This is a 40 millimeter ping pong ball. So basically the track, the dimensions of the Geneva mechanism, the launcher, all of those have to be based off of the size of the ping pong ball. The second main constraint was I wanted it to fit between these two windows right here. So there was an overall size constraint that I had to follow. Lastly, I wanted to be able to 3D print as much as possible on this sculpture. And that actually plays a huge role in how you design things moving forward. With those three things in mind, it was time to start refining the overall design concept, which basically came down to a weight on a catapult and some sort of cam mechanism to pull the catapult down. And once it hit the end of the cam, it would release the catapult, the ball would go flying in the air. The second thing that I had to figure out was how to lift the balls. And I really wanted to do something with the Geneva mechanism. So I thought that this would be a perfect opportunity. With the design concept in mind, it was time to go to CAD and start modeling some parts. The first thing I did was I created a rough outline for the track so I could start getting a feel for the scale of everything in this design. The track was basically just a swept feature where I swept this profile along the track outline and that's how we got this basic shape which is actually very similar to the design that you see right here. Now call it fail fast mentality or a really short attention span, but I like to get things out into the real world as fast as possible. I decided it would be a good place to start on the ball lifting mechanism. So I created the Geneva mechanism, printed it out and tested it. Next, I printed just the bottom left corner of the track, threw the Geneva mechanism into it and was really surprised to see how well it was working right off the bat. I was feeling pretty pumped, so it was time to move on to the catapult. I tried a couple different scoop profiles, but I really wasn't satisfied with the trajectory of the ping pong ball so I decided to try a different mechanism entirely which was more of a plunger style launcher similar to a pinball machine I was still planning to use the weight to launch the plunger after creating a simple prototype for that I quickly realized the weight could not generate enough velocity to launch the ping pong ball into the air and that's when we switched to elastic bands luckily I had the foresight to print holes into the plunger mechanism so that way we could attach accessories to it and it was really easy to put elastic bands on it. Right away, it was clear that the elastic bands were superior to drop in the weight. Now that we were able to launch ping pong balls into the air, we just had to figure out how to do that with motor power. After brainstorming a couple of different mechanisms that I could use to charge up the elastic bands, I settled on this spiral cam. As it turns, it slowly pulls the plunger back, stretching the elastic bands. And when it hits the end of the cam, the plunger arms release, shooting the ping pong ball up into the air. Once we had the launcher launching balls into the catcher, I ended up rigging a janky attachment between the ball lifter to the launcher just to get it all working together. Definitely had some momentum here, but the worst part of every project was about to come. Integrating everything into a fully functional working machine. What that basically means is sitting in front of the computer and just spending countless hours twirling the model around, thinking about how to make everything 3D printable and look good and fit together. And this is about the point where my ADHD kicked in because we weren't producing anything physically anymore. It was a week of computer work. So I ended up going on a couple of different side quests that were sort of procrastination, but were also sort of like productive. One of the side quests was to test my methodology for mounting everything into the backboard. I ended up creating this really fun machine just so I could screw some track segments into a backboard. But honestly, this is pretty dope. This side quest ended up leading to another side quest, which was a way to make the first side quest manual so it didn't have to operate off of a motor. Definitely got a little bit carried away, but it's all good because we got two awesome things out of it. And in the process, I was certain that my method for mounting the track to the board was gonna work. Another big challenge that I had to figure out during this daunting design process was how to get it so absolutely no hardware was showing out the front of the sculpture. This posed some challenges like, how to mount the motor, how to mount the plunger guide, how to get this whole sandwich of parts right here to look good. This meant more CAD twirling, pacing around the shop, going back to the side quest, coming back to it again. But eventually we got it so everything was screwed in from the back. 
The last challenge to figure out during this whole period was how to print all the tracks. I wanted everything to print on the same machine so it had a consistent looking surface. So I ended up breaking everything down so it could fit on my Prusa machines and then everything slot together and screwed into place. It took about four full days across two different printers to print this entire thing. Everything here is printed except for the backboard, which is laser cut acrylic that I then spray painted, the motor, which is obviously not 3D printed, and the elastic bands, which are also not not 3D printed. Now that I had all the parts, it was time to assemble it. It went surprisingly well. The last thing I had to add was this power cord. And as a final touch, I added a pull switch so the power cord could be the on and off switch as well. The last thing to do is to hang it up on the wall and then turn it on. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. This is my favorite thing that I've made so far and it is an absolute honor to be able to share it with you guys. I hope you get something out of this video. Comment below if there's anything that you would like to know more about and we'll try to cover those things in future videos and I'll see you guys there.